Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu, and I'm always searching for the meaning of freedom, what does it entail? So I broke it down into financial, time, location, health. And with that, I'm always looking for guests on the margins, cutting edge, changing the world. So today I'm happy to bring on uh, Rocky Lovani, and he serves as the chief profitability advisor for business owners. So if you remember, he's going to talk about the book Profit First, and he's going to teach people how to ensure they get paid and make profit. So you'll see that profitability is a different thing than cash flow. So I'm happy to welcome Rocky to the stage and share his story. So welcome, Rocky. Thank you so much for having me today. Excited to be with you. Um, tell us more about your story. I'm always interested in origin stories because that's like, that's inspiring thing. So tell us more about that and we'll get into the show. Sure. So I'm an immigrant to the United States. Uh, my parents brought me here when I was very young and like most immigrants back then started out with very little is when they first came here, but they would hang out with their friends who also had immigrated around the same times and they all found success in building the American dream here. So they were all professionals in, in some sense and educated when they came here, but starting over in America, which is always never easy. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that I didn't realize until much later in life, they would get together and they would talk about money. They would talk about how they were doing things and how they were figuring out the American way, so to speak. And so I got to hear those conversations as a kid financial conversations were normal. I just assumed everybody had financial conversations and learned about money. It wasn't until much later in life I realized for a lot of people, it's a taboo subject. It's not something they were taught. Mm -hmm. And then when I look back at it and I go, wait a minute, I went to all this school. They never taught me about money. I have a degree in economics and an MBA. They never taught us how to build wealth. And so it was just kind of like an aha moment for uh -huh. me. <laughs> with regards to that. So, and I've always been interested in how do I build wealth? And then later I realized that building wealth wasn't about the stuff. It was about what you said, the time freedom. Mm, yeah, I love that. And I think um, a lot of the misconceptions around money is perpetuated by the media because they want you to go out and, you know, buy, you know, consume and just make the economy go run and then and then they kind of keep you in the dark about money oh don't talk about it you know oh we'll fit you know it's all you know <laughs> but uh it's it's good that um you know people are actually waking up to realize that money is very important it's not it's not everything but it can solve a help you a lot make life easier so we'll talk about you, this idea of profit first so we'll just get into overarching and then we'll get into like kind of like the funnel the nick yeah. So I think, first of all, I, I want to say this because a lot of people think when you say profit first, that you're putting people last, that you're greedy, that you're selfish. None of that could be further from the truth. Profit first is nothing but a cash flow system that allows you to run a healthy business. Let's face it, most businesses don't make it five years, very few make it to 10 years. One of the major reasons is they don't have good cash flow. So this is nothing more than good financial management. It's saying, hey, when I created my business, I came up with a pro forma and I said, this is how the business was going to make money and this is where the money was going to go. I don't think anyone starts a business to lose money, mm -hmm. right? You start a business to be profitable. And if you say you're going to be 10% profitable, do you actually put the 10% profit aside? And as you as the business owner also deserve to get paid. And I think a lot of business owners put themselves at the end of the line. They pay everybody else first and then they get paid. And it's no wonder they're tired, overworked and, and struggle. The other thing people forget is if you are profitable, the IRS wants its taxes. They don't forget. <laughs> and, you know, when you're working on a paycheck, it's simple because they take all your taxes out every week. When you run your business, if you're not taking your taxes out on a regular basis, when tax time comes, it's a major wake up call. Yeah. And so all Profit First is, is a simple cash flow system that allocates money to profit, to your pay, 
to taxes and then to operating expenses. Mm -hmm. What we find is everyone has told you have to spend money to make money, mm -hmm. which is not necessarily true. Mm -hmm. And so they overspend in their business and then they wonder why they're not profitable or they're not paid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. Uh, talk to this because I had uh, recently, I have a friend, she's a digital nomad and basically she got her first six figure. She's been in business two years, three years. She broke the six figure mark last year. And then like it, she put, recently posted, she's like, oh my God, I have this like huge tax bill and it like depleted my, <laughs> but uh, so tell people about this idea, you know, as entrepreneurs, this idea of cash flow and profitability and how they're not the same thing. So a lot of people will go into their accounting reports and they'll they'll run their profit and loss report. And their profit and loss report might say that they're profitable. But then they ask, well, if I'm profitable, why is there no cash in the bank? <laughs> and that's where some of the stuff comes up because usually tax is not a line item on the P&L, mm. right? Debt payments per se the only part of the debt payment that shows up on the, the P&L is the interest portion. Mm -hmm. But the larger portion is the principal repayment portion. Mm -hmm. If the business owner takes a draw from the business, that doesn't show up on the P&L. So mm -hmm. there's all these things that are missing from the way the accounting people do their reports. And that's why the numbers don't necessarily match what you see in your bank account. Uh -huh. Cash flow is a whole different thing. So let's just say I sold something today and I'm excited. Did you get paid today? That's the real question. Mm -hmm. Were you going to get paid in 30 days or 60 days? Because if you're not getting paid for 60 days until you get paid, the sale is not done. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think a lot of people don't always collect. I, I have a lot of small business owners. They don't even invoice. And then they wonder why they're struggling. They do all this work for free. Uh -huh. It happens all the time. Uh -huh. So there's a variety of things that are involved. Let's face it. Most people got into business to do what they love and accounting wasn't on the list. Yeah. And so they ignore the parts of the business that they don't enjoy. And accounting tends to be one of them. And then they get in struggle. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I read the book, you know, that uh, once uh, it was highly recommended. And the main idea was just allocate different buckets from your from your um, sales, you know, it's got to go to taxes, got to go to, you know, your, your repayments, you know, and then pay yourself first as Robert Kiyosaki says, um, that was kind of big thing. Um, how do, um, so when, when business owners, they do this, how do you ensure to have a uh, growing and more profitable uh, business? Well, so the growing side of business is all about sales, right? But what people don't talk about is that growth takes money, right? You might need to spend on advertising. You might need to spend on product. If you're going to go sell something and you need to have inventory, all of that takes money. And if you haven't sat down and figured out how much growth is going to cost you, how much money you need to grow, and even coming back to that whole accounts receivable and accounts payable, you know, if you sell something to let's say a large chain and say, sell this product for me. A lot of people got excited when they got into Walmart or they got excited when they get into Costco. They don't realize that Costco or Walmart's not going to pay them for 90 or 120 days. Mm -hmm. How are you going to pay for that cash flow and that growth? Uh -huh. And in, in between the time that they placed their order and they paid you, they probably place a second order. And so you need to even be able to do that. So a lot of people don't sit down and measure what that looks like. And, and this is not really complicated math. We're not doing calculus here, right? We're doing third grade math, fourth grade math of just sitting down and saying, when is the cash coming and when is the cash going and understanding the spread and what that looks like. And then if you need to borrow money to fund growth, then you might need to do that but understand what that looks like. And I think a lot of business owners miss this step. They just think I'll just sell something and that solves problems. But if you sell something and you're not paid or you're not paid quickly enough, or you take the money that you just got from that sale and you pay your past bills, then you're going to struggle to pay the bill to deliver what you just sold. Mm, yeah. I love that. And this, I love the, what you talk about and especially this, um, 
you know, as a certified profit first professional, it kind of um, sheds a light that it's not just all about sales, but it's it's cash management. Um, and then you mentioned something in the accounting reports where, you know, taxes is not included, but what are your, um, you talk about this idea where why your accounting reports don't tell you everything you need to know. So I think that's a big part of it. Um, and, and we're, we're literally on tax day today, right? So (laughs) I'll I'll just kind of tell a story because this is what happens, right? It might be November, Right. And you and your con- your accountant have a conversation, which, first of all, is very rare. Most business owners aren't having conversations with their CPA, which is a major mistake. Mm. But usually what happens around the end of the year, they're like, oh, should I buy a truck so that I can save on taxes and write it off? <laughs> and so come December, these people buy a truck. Now, they don't pay cash for it. They put it on a payment plan or something. Oh. That truck doesn't necessarily show up on the P&L. The Uh truck shows up on the balance sheet. Most business owners don't look at their balance sheet. They don't know how to read it. And most people view the balance sheet as a static piece of information. Mm -hmm. The reality is you have to look at your balance sheet from month to month to see how it's changing. Money is made on the balance sheet, but it Uh is a rare art to understand what's going on and how it's affected. So you buy the truck. Right. You save on taxes, but then you have the monthly payment that now causes you a cash flow struggle, Uh Uh which is a major problem. And then on top of that, they don't realize, like, let's just say I have a business and it's got a 10 percent profit margin and I just bought an eighty thousand dollar truck. I have to sell eight hundred worth of merchandise to cover my eighty thousand dollars of truck. People uh-huh. don't realize what the true cost of buying that truck is in the way of work and effort wow. to be able to pay for it. And I think this is where people don't understand the power of what all these costs come down to and what's really required to cover it from a profit standpoint. Yeah, yeah, that's that's amazing. We're um, coming towards the end of the show and, you know, this, you know, money is one portion, but you, one thing is, you know, money is a tool and a resource and idea, you know, we can't take it with us when we leave. So, um, so tell us why money won't make you happy and how to live the ultimate life and the role that money plays. (laughs) So, I mean, let's face it. If you look around and you do see people who have a ton of money, ask yourself, are they happy? Do they look thrilled or many of them just not happy with their lives? Mm. You know, we are all kind of chasing that American dream of that. I think what money does give you is freedom and it gives you time, but you have to be smart enough to buy the time. Mm -hmm. Too often people are working too hard. They don't have the time for their families to rest, to relax, to do all of those things. Money to a certain point, like if you don't have a a roof and you don't have food, Money is going to help you dramatically. But once you have a decent amount of food and a nice shelter and a regu- you know, a reasonable car, more of it isn't going to make you any happier. Yeah. And so I think that's the bigger thing is understanding it's you kind of talked about it earlier. Consumerism. Consumerism never makes us happy because there's always a better car. There's always a better house. There's always a bigger boat, right? <laughs> and even when you get it, you you look around and you go, oh, it's not enough. <laughs> and that's the problem. Yeah, it's interesting. I was like, I was like, uh, you know, I bur- bought my first house and then I'm looking around me. I'm just like, uh, I'm still the same person, you know, still, still, you know, and then, you know, I talked to a lot of, you know, people who have made it and they're just like miserable and, you know, lonely. And I, I'm just like, there has to be another there has to be something more. So um, it's it was a great conversation. Um, how do people contact you, follow you, and reach out to you? So I have two podcasts where we teach about all of this. Profit Answer Man, we teach how to be profitable. And on Richer Soul, we teach how to live that ultimate life. And so both of those are the, the best places to learn more and to see what we're up to. And uh, for all the audience out there listening, uh, Rocky, for a fantastic interview, um, very knowledgeable. He's on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as websites. All those resources will be in the links and show notes. And with that, 
Thanks so much for coming on to the show. It was a great conversation. Thanks for having me today.